You're listening to a podcast from evidencenetwork.ca, making evidence matter in Canadian health policy. The suicide rate for men in Canada is three to four times higher than women. This rate increases even more in certain subgroups such as gay men, indigenous men, or veterans. Evidence suggests that accessible community-based programs that target these vulnerable groups are beneficial. These initiatives aim to open up the conversation about mental health and reduce stigma while providing therapeutic opportunities. Brittany Dennison, an advisor with the University of British Columbia's Men's Health Research Group, says that programs like these help people like Jason speak out about the struggle with mental health. Basically, he had been struggling for a really long period of time since he was a young kid with depression, anxiety, borderline personality disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, and then had survived a suicide attempt. And all of this sort of stemmed from his experiences growing up and being um, what he refers to as bullied, but more accurately assaulted as a, as a young boy because of his sexual preference. The Man Up Against Suicide program allowed for Jason to express his feelings while reaching other people in similar circumstances. The Man Up Against Suicide project is an art-based project, so Jason did a selection of photographs, and he also did a large painting, and, and this was basically to share his story with the public and hope that that helped destigmatize the experience of mental health and mental illness and the experiences of growing up as a gay man. Dr. John Olaf, lead investigator of the Men's Health Research Program at UBC, says that reducing the stigma is a major goal of these community-based programs. If, if there's stigma around a certain ailment such as depression, then it tends to block guys from going and seeking professional help. Uh, it might also block them from even recognizing depressive symptoms in themselves because it's not necessarily something men get. So trying to destigmatize mental illness and suicidality and suicide prevention are important important ways to sort of debunk those myths about men not needing help and not necessarily getting professional help for, for mental illness. Another group that has higher rates of mental illness are veterans. They are able to express the complexities of their experience of war in the unique contact unload performance. And this is veterans who come back from Afghanistan and really what they're doing is they're, they're doing a play, but they're they're really not acting. They're they're really conveying some of the challenges that there are about reacclimatizing to civilian life when you come back. So it's a very poignant and powerful play, and it's also we've found that the guys who who work in the play, being returned veterans, really draw some therapeutic value from it. But I think also the audience is really orientated to some of the challenges that those guys endure. And it helps to orientate us to, to ways in which we can think about helping those guys. And uh, it's really shown great benefit in reducing PTSD amongst guys and depressive symptoms and uh, a very high completion rate of that program as well. So I think it's a terrific example of community-based pieces. Other community-based programs, like the Dudes Club, target mental health issues using culturally sensitive approaches for First Nations men. And so this uh, this is run by a physician, Paul Gross, and it's uh, in the downtown east side, so it's a, an area these, these men are familiar with. It's a very rare kind of forum that brings a particularly vulnerable subgroup of men, being First Nations men in particular, into a space um, to be able to connect with each other. So it, it's really, it's a, it's a great model. It's peer-based, but it's physician-facilitated. Uh, and I think it's a terrific example of a community-based approach to addressing a vulnerable subgroup of men around uh, mental illness and, and suicide. By providing accessibility and support for vulnerable groups, Dr. Olaf says that community-based programs are an essential part of addressing the male suicide problem. The community-based programs work in Canada, especially around men. One of the reasons is is that they often are brought into spaces that are familiar, so we're not asking them to go into hospital settings or traditional settings. We're we're kind of offering similar services on the ground in community bases in the places where men often reside. So I think they're fantastic in that respect, and also they tend to access vulnerable subgroups. So we can build these community-based projects and programs 
to draw guys in. So that you know, the Dudes Club of the Downtown East Side is a, is a, is a great example. The Veterans with a specific program is a great example. And they are community-based now on the ground. So I think we have an obligation to to fund these in a sustainable and scalable way so as we can address the issue that, that is really long-standing, and that is, is that men's suicide in in, uh, in very high numbers, especially in particularly vulnerable subgroups. For Evidence Network, this is Dane Wanyarachige. You've been listening to a podcast from evidencenetwork.ca, making evidence matter in Canadian health policy. Connect with the latest nonpartisan health research from experts across Canada and around the world, or sign up to receive our free monthly e-newsletter at evidencenetwork.ca. You can also subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. Evidencenetwork.ca is funded by the Canadian Institutes of Health Research, Research Manitoba, and the Centre for Healthcare Innovation.